EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Mother Angelica Live. Brought to you from the Eternal Word Television Studios in Birmingham, Alabama. our church. This whole network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. We just got a great audience this evening. We got couple of buses and we've got people from upper Michigan, Copper Country, to Florida, to Louisiana, all of them. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, politicians and pumpkins. <laughs> I don't know which order we'll take them, but politicians and pumpkins. In other words, we're going to talk about Halloween and elections and anything else you want to talk about. It's very difficult sometimes in, a, in a, a crisis like we're in now. And I think we're in a political crisis. So I want you to call me. You can give me your opinion about something. You can ask for prayers. You can complain about something. You can tell me your heartaches. You can tell me a joy you had this afternoon, or a fear, or an anger. Something that is a part of you that you just want to get off your chest. It's 1-800-221-9460. It's free. You know, we are talking about politicians. And politics and politicians are, are necessary in a democracy. And we need to pray this time very hard. Um, because in the, in, the, in, the, in the eyes of many people, there's not much choice. You hate to say that. I think you ought to vote pro-life no matter what. It's my opinion. <laughs> but life is everything. The elderly, the unborn, the born, all of us. And then there is also spiritual life. See, if I take care of the body and I don't take care of the soul, then there could be a disastrous effect on me. You don't either have to tell people to take care of their body. We spend our entire life on it. Um, you see little kids now, you know, they're, they're kind of combing her hair. I saw a little kid. I'm a little. I bet she was eight years old. She's combing her hair. And she was coming down like that and looking at it. Soft, you know. She used some kind of shampoo she probably saw in a television. So we, we, we just, by nature, take care of ourselves. And sometimes that's a preoccupation. That's all we do. And I've often wondered if we thought of pro-life as pro-eternal life. You know, you and I have been created by God for a specific reason, to know, to love, and to serve Him, and be happy with Him in the kingdom. Most of you don't even know there's a kingdom, except the kingdom on earth. 
But the kingdom on earth is more purgatory, you know what I mean? You have your joys and your sorrows, but it doesn't have that glow that the kingdom that's coming has. To me, the ideal politician would be the one who had also concern about your soul. That you had freedom of religion, that you had peace and joy, that you had work, that you had security and assurance. There would be a caring, like a, like a doctor. You know, a doctor to me has to care. Some doctors, it's uh, kind of in and out. Ever go to in and out, doctor? Yeah? <laughs> you read three and a half hours in the, in the room? You read every single magazine that's there? <laughs> and you're bored, and you start, the, the first magazine looks good again, so you start on that. <laughs> and then your name is called. Then you sit in an office another 10 minutes with another boring magazine. I think doctor's offices are, are pinpointed by boring magazines. I got so bored one time, I read about bears. <laughs> well, after you get in, if you're lucky to get in, uh, then, if you had a hurry up, doctor, he looks at you, puts a thing in your tongue, looks in your ears, examines your heart, and says, you're in great shape. Why are you here? <laughs> well, I got a pain. Where is your pain? In my back. Turn around. Boom, 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 boom. Sounds good. <laughs> Five minutes. And you're out with the prescription. That isn't all the time. Doctors are wonderful. I got plenty of them. But sometimes you get stuck like that, see? And so I always promote that doctor who has sex time with you. And I got one of those. It's wonderful. Not hurry. I think that's how politicians should be. To serve people. Not to tell you things that make you feel good. You all know everything they're saying isn't going to happen because it'd be impossible. But anyway, there should be, and I think that's where we need to pray tonight. Not for just honest politicians, moral politicians, religious politicians, politicians that love God, but politicians who want to serve. That's, that's what's so important, I think, in what we pray tonight. And if the choice is not there, what do you do? I've talked to so many people this, this last couple of months, and they're all in a quandary. You know? They don't know what to do. They don't know who to vote for. But I want to remind you of something, to tell you why it's that way. In the Old Testament, one of the chastisements of a people that have left the Lord was bad leaders. But it, one leader was worse than the other, just kept on rolling. And we have to know, if we want a good leader or we want good leaders in the future, we, the people, have to pray. We have to pray. We must say our rosary this time, that no matter who gets in, no matter what he says he thinks, or whatever it is he's for, that somehow after he's in, it changes. Otherwise, you don't know who to vote for. We need to pray tonight, not for a person or a party. I think we need to pray that whoever gets in, no matter what his so-called platform is now, that the Lord Jesus and his wondrous mother will change that platform for, him for something much better, for the good of the people. I think that's the only prayer you can have tonight, don't you think? What else are you going to pray for? There are many candidates. You have to vote for that one that's for life, spiritual life, 
physical life, the life of the elderly, the life of other people in the world. We have the same blood and the same heart as you and I do. And so we need to pray for life. And I think that's what we ought to pray for now. We ought to pray, Lord Jesus, I ask that you look at all three candidates. I ask that you inspire the people to vote for the one that you think you can work with the best. I want you to pick out that candidate, Lord, and I want you to change his heart because all three need a change of heart. Change of mind. We need to work for the people. We need to work together as a family, as a nation under God. We don't want to be, Lord, a disheartened people. And we don't want to be a confused people. We don't want to, to choose between evils. We want to choose between good, better, and best. Since that doesn't seem to be the case, then we ask, Lord Jesus, through the power, power of prayer and the rosary and, and your wonderful mother, that whoever gets elected as president of one of the greatest nations in the world will have at that moment, no matter what he thinks now, a change of heart. Touch his heart, his mind. If what he thinks is not good, then change it, Lord. Your people in America are under such bondage, spiritual bondage in the church, material bondage in the world, economic bondage in the nation. We are a people under bondage. But you, Lord, you are the one. You are the victor. You are the one that can release us all from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of not being under you anymore a nation who promotes death, not life. So we pray tonight, Lord, whoever gets in, by this time, maybe next week, we'll know pretty well, we ask that even now, Lord, you begin to change that person's heart, mind, and soul. That once that awesome responsibility is placed upon his shoulders, he bears it well and under God. We are not disheartened or discouraged by what we see or hear. For we know, Lord, that you are master of all, and this nation and all nations are in the palm of your hand. And so the prayer we have tonight, Lord, is a change of heart for those who think otherwise and have other agendas. We ask that no matter who's elected, life will be on the agenda. Eternal life, physical life, the life of the elderly, the laborer, those without food, without work, will be once again under a nation under God as family. That's the prayer we have tonight, Lord. We are a people who cannot choose. We are confused. We will do our best. We ask that you change the heart of the one who gets elected. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Ha, huh? gee, that would be a triumph for Jesus. So we have a call, hello? 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 Hello, Mother. Yeah, where are you from? I'm in Ohio. What, my home state? Oh, yes. Okay. I know you well here. Uh, EWTN is a real uh, uh, ray of hope for me as a Catholic. Thank you. But, Mother, what I want to ask you is why aren't we hearing more from the bishops that we, uh, as Catholics, have a serious moral, moral obligation to vote against uh, avowed pro-abortion candidates? Why are the bishops... <laughs> and priests so afraid to remind us that without life, uh, every other issue is meaningless. Well, I, 
I, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else, but I, th I don't know. Knowing human nature as I do this, it's an awful lot of politics. Everybody's afraid of hurting somebody's feelings. Everybody's afraid if I say this, then this is going to happen. What I'm saying is, for goodness sake, stand up for God and the church, and, and Jesus will take care of all these other things that might happen. And that's what, it's there. It's not there. It's not there. I'm sorry to say that. And, and everybody knows it's not there. They're timid. There's a tremendous amount of timidity, um, I think, among the clergy sometimes, because they, they're afraid. Afraid. I wonder when we're afraid to speak out what's right before God. I wonder if people like that believe they're going to see him face to face one day. You know, I could be a real brave uh, uh, mentally fighting a lion if I was absolutely sure I'd never see a lion. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can get really brave. But get that guy looking at you straight in the face with his mouth open, you'd, see, you'd think something else. I think that's how we are in the church sometimes. We're always looking at him imaginary lions, but when it comes time to stand tall, we disappear. I don't know. I never understood politics. I don't want to either. I think it's crummy. I think it's a necessary crumb. But it's crummy nonetheless. <laughs> because uh, I don't understand the, the need to be dishonest and to be afraid. I'm not afraid. I don't think it's a virtue on my part. I'm getting old and I can afford to say what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to the happy 70s, which will be in April. I told to a group Sunday, I said, when I get to be Sunday, I'm going to have me a big party. Because at that point, I can say anything I please, and everybody will say, oh, that little old sweet little old lady. <laughs> 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 and the sister said to me, well, what have you been doing all this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I have to answer your question. I think it's timidity and fear. Fear. See, we're, we're, we don't trust the Lord. If I am for Jesus and I speak for Jesus and I speak for life and I'm, I, I, I can't be afraid of consequences. That's where you begin to get not only tippet but cowardly. But if the Lord's given you light, get out there and fight. Fight for life. We have another call. Hello? Hello. Hi. Uh, Where are you from? Missouri. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I have a couple comments to make. Uh, <clears throat> we talk about pro life and uh, pro choice. Yeah. I think what we're really talking about is pro God and anti God. Right. And uh, uh, the caller before me, he asked a question which was answered in the Sunday Visitor this last week with regards to telling people to choose a uh, candidate. Mm -hmm. The IRS has a, uh, a law that says that if you start to, into politics, you, you, you'll lose your tax status, ex yeah, that's tax right. exempt status. That's right. And I think that's what is the uh, uh, thing that uh, uh, they don't say anything about. Well... I know that's true, uh, but I think it's also true that you don't use your God status. What is your status before God? I don't know. I think you have to stand before the Lord, and and uh, and it's not a matter of uh, choosing a candidate. I can't tell you who to vote for. I would never do that. But I can say, and will say, and do say, you need to vote for that candidate that's pro-life. And if there are none, then you need to ask the Lord to give us good leaders. 
And whoever gets in to change his mind and heart, that's the people can do that. That has nothing to do with a tax status. I was asked several times to have some of the wives of politicians on the air. I don't want to do that. This is, this is a spiritual entity. But I, it's my obligation to give you a spiritual uh, entity of politics and politicians and how to vote from your heart. See, we, I don't know if God is, is going to understand that all of us who uh, are so, so many Catholics pro-choice, you know, See, when God thought of you, he was pro-life. <clears throat> he had the choice of creating you or not creating you. But he decided to create you. That was his choice. But his choice is always pro-life. And I think that's, you know, but God did not, not permit, let, allowing us to have good leaders because we're not a strong people anymore. We kind of all roll over and let people walk all over us, you know. The poor, poor, poor priest takes out the nailers and we stand. And somebody else, something, we do that. And something else happens, we do that. Well, you got any guts anymore? What's the matter with you? You can't you stand at the consecration. You kneel. How are you going to stand when the Lord God is coming down? Huh? How are you going to stand? I've been asking all the guardian angels of all these people to push them down. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing I don't have any extraordinary powers. <laughs> I'd really have fun. I'd go in one of these liberal churches. I'd take that monstrous baptismal fount and shrink it in front of everybody. I, I'd have fun, but then God don't give me those powers because he knows I'd mess it all up. Is there anybody in the studio that have a question? Don't be afraid. No, geez, that's discouraging. <laughs> Nobody has a question. Nobody, not even anybody down there. Okay, here we go, go. I don't have a question, but I'd like to stand up to the Lord and say something about abortion. Good. As far as I'm concerned, it is legalized murder. It is? And you have made your choice when you became pregnant. You have a choice of not getting pregnant. I think it's very good. Anybody else have an opinion or question? Do I hear a voice somewhere? I don't. Anyway. Now I like to talk about Halloween. Pumpkins. You know, Halloween is, is not the feast it used to be. And I think you need to know that. Many centuries ago, it was uh, brought about as a kind of mockery of All Saints Day. Uh, the word, the awesome word, terrible thing of hocus pocus, dominocus, was a was a, a, a terrible blasphemy against the Latin uh, words for consecration: oc est enim corpus meum which is the words, this is my body. So then they started putting on little innocent costumes, but now it is the feast of Satan himself, and it's all over the world. It's no longer a little party. It's no longer something that, that people used to have parties and dress up in all kinds of costumes. And No, this is Satan's big feast day. And we need to make reparation for that. And, and we forget. We forget All Saints Day, November 1st. We forget All Souls Day, November 2nd. <clears throat> you and I <clears throat> have to make reparation this Saturday night. Is it Saturday night, Halloween? Uh, and and make, make your children understand that this is not a day of joy. It is a day of great sadness. It is a day when witches, when black masses, when human sacrifices, when the most horrible things occur. That's what that is. And, and I would like you to call 
or maybe somebody here in the audience, and make reparation. And so I'm going to say a little prayer, then we'll go for a call. Lord Jesus, as you look upon your world, the world you made so beautiful and so wondrous, your enemy, Lord, your enemy, Satan, has had charge of this world too long. Too long, Lord, has he reigned in this world. And his adherents, even, even among priests, the religious, lay people, Catholics, Christians, atheists and agnostics who hate you, Lord, who hate your mass, who hate your church, who hate your people. On this night shall the most hideous blasphemies be made to your most wondrous name and your wondrous majesty. On that night, Lord, shall black masses be celebrated everywhere in the world when your wondrous body and blood will be so defiled by your enemy. We, your people, weak, unworthy that we are, ask you, Lord, to prevent this from happening, to call down your angels by the legions and protect the Eucharist and protect your people. Deliver this world from the tyranny of satanic worship. Deliver this world and this church from the tyranny of fear, the tyranny of hatred, <clears throat> the tyranny of liberalism, the tyranny of destruction of everything we consider good and holy. So this Halloween, Lord, let thy saints in heaven cry out to thee, holy, holy, holy. Let the angels in heaven cry out to thee, thee alone. You alone, Lord, are holy. You alone are God. You alone majestic. Let thy people on earth cry out, not in grotesque costumes and parties, but on their knees, saying, Lord God, have mercy upon your people. Lord, grant that this Halloween may be totally destroyed. That no one anywhere will be able to defile thy wondrous presence in the Eucharist. Give us all that grace to understand that this is of all days in the year is without question the most blasphemous, the most disastrous day in the calendar of this world. Grant that one day it shall be totally erased from the face of the earth. That no more shall your body and blood be defiled. No more will your name be taken in vain. This I ask, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus, Mary. Amen. If you have a prayer, Please call in. And we have a caller. Hello? Hello. Where are you from? Buffalo. And what is your question? Uh, um, I'm here with a 10 group of a CCD class. Mm -hmm. And we would just like to know how we can increase our faith as a group. How old is your group? Uh, 14 to 15. Well, wonderful. Thank you. Hey, great. Well, sweetheart, we increase our faith and you increase your faith by love, you know? I, 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 the more you love someone, the more you believe in them. Did you know that? Now, you can always twist it around and say, well, the more I believe, the more I love. But we're not going to look at it this way today. Faith means that I see Jesus in my neighbor, in the events of the day, even though they may be painful, 
and and you have to you have to make a little bit of effort on your part to say and you got to know your faith you got to know your catechism you got to know god loves me wow everybody wants to be loved but nobody has the faintest idea how much they're loved by god People would never sin if they knew how much they were loved by God. But that takes faith, doesn't it? Huh? And faith isn't something that... Um, faith is to see, see, the invisible reality. And you exercise that faith by a real attachment to Jesus. So much so that your life is affected by what you believe. Do you realize if every Christian had faith, this entire world would be changed? Why? Because we would be exercising and we would be doing what we believe. See, we, Christians are responsible, I think, most of the time for the way the world is because we don't exercise what we believe. If you believe in Jesus, then you want to be like him. Well, the Beatitudes show you how to do that. In other words, my faith is such that I want to be like Jesus. I want to look alike. Is that great? Yeah. And you, you ever know anybody you want to look alike? No. Gee. <laughs> yeah, sure you do. You want to look like Jesus. Well, I want to look like Jesus. I remember a holy priest I saw years ago. Not that there are not holy priests everywhere, but, but there was a glow about him. You looked at him, you said, oh, hi, Jesus. You just wanted to say that because that's how you felt. But so what is it, what, how, do you, how are you like Jesus? Well, you're loving, you're compassionate, you're moral, you're forgiving, you're kind. When tragedies happen, you see God, even though it's hard. It takes faith. But these are things you can do every day, every, every day. You can exercise your faith by not running around trick-and-treating. That's what you can do. You can exercise your faith by making an hour, a holy hour together on Halloween night and, and raise up your hands to the Lord in prayer. That's faith. Because faith also not only sees good, but it sees where evil is. And, and you can also exercise faith by going before the Blessed Sacrament. If your church has the misfortune of being closed, then understand Go to the church, ask Father for the key. What a wonderful witness if a group of, of teenage, 11, 10, 8, 11, 12 years old, said, Father, can we have the key? We want to see Jesus. Ooh, wouldn't that set him off? <laughs> see? And that's what they said. I want to see Jesus. And I want to see Jesus in you. But you can't do that if you don't see Jesus in the Eucharist. See? So it'd be nice after school, make a little visit. That's faith. It's nice to get together on Halloween and put away the things of the world and kneel down and pray. That would be faith. And, and they can do this and live in the world. See, the Lord said, you are in the world, but you're not of it. Can you beat that? In the world, but not of it, which means you have another dimension, another set of values that other people don't have. You see things different than anyone else sees them. You do. That's, that's what's so important in our life, that we have a whole different set of values. Well, let's look here. 
Here's another way of going in faith. He says we have to put, have a duty to put up with the qualms of the week. <laughs> Most of the time we want to boot them out. See? But no, you've got to have patience. It says here, you, you have, must have love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's faith. See, there's another part here. It said, the grace has already been granted us before the beginning of time. You were destined, created by God, destined by God to witness to Jesus. And that's what you kids can do wonderful. Go in a, why don't you go in a group sometime in a mall? If you want to, I'll send you some leaflets and you can go around and give to all those old people sitting in there on those benches looking, watching the people go by like a tennis match. You know, just go back and forth, back and forth. Go sit by one and say, hi, you know Jesus? I'm ready to fall off his seat. <laughs> and if you're a Catholic, I guarantee you'll fall off your seat. Because our Catholic youth are not evangelistic enough. Go in, in your own school and see if you got the guts to say to your neighbor, somebody there, even if he's on drugs, is waiting to hear, God loves you. He wouldn't be on drugs if he knew that. This world must be evangelized by youth. So I, I think you've got wonderful things and wonderful ways to show your faith. We have another call. Hello? Hi, Mother Angelica. Hi. Where are you from? I'm, I'm from Connecticut. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Now you pick it a little louder, please. Um, I have a question. I'm from Connecticut. I'm All nine right. years old. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, my grandfather, um, he says that he is holy, but he, but he doesn't act like he is. He says he's holy? Yes. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? He doesn't act like he's holy. He joins organizations. To help people for recognition, but he, but he just goes on there for fun. Ah. What else did you got to say about him? He's against Catholics. He's a what? He's against Catholics. An ex-Catholic. No, he's against Catholics. Oh, he's against. Oh, that's terrible. We're nice people. Why is he against us? I don't know. Are you Catholic? Well, I'm joining the Catholic Church. Good for you. Good for mom. Well, honey, I don't know. You know, there's something in your grandfather that's missing. There may be a hidden bitterness somewhere along the line. He may have been deeply hurt by a nun or a priest. Of all the hurts you can get in the whole wide world, there's nothing worse than getting hurt by a priest or a nun. I don't know why, but it hurts more than anything. Um, I don't think your, your, your grandfather is, is against Catholics for no reason. I think, I think people think they have reasons, but I don't think they're valid reasons. Um, I, I, I've said this before, I met a man, I said, you, you've been going to church? He said, no, you're all a bunch of hypocrites. I said, well, one more won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would try, if I were you, especially since you're going to become a Catholic, you have to realize that in, the, in that that desire you have for Catholicity is not just a religion. When you become a, a, a Catholic, you encounter the very person of Jesus in the Eucharist. It's, it's awesome, 
awesome. It's much more than a religion. It's a, a personal encounter with Jesus. And, and in order to do that, your breast preparation, even though you know your, you know him well, be more loving. Be more kind to him. Kind of overlook all these things he does. Uh, the first sign that you're not holy is when you think you're holy. So you got that settled right off the bat. <laughs> However, I think the fact he says that, there is a need for him to be considered good. He may have a real complex, but pray for him. Pray for him. Ask the Jesus to, to make him see something in you, and especially when you make your first communion. Oh, what a wonderful day that will be. So exciting the first time in your life you go up to that altar and you receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus' Son of the Most High God in such a humble form. Well, that wonderful experience has to kind of go over on, your, on him, see? Let him be the beneficiary of, of that excess love that you're going to have. And I, I'm going to pray for you and ask our Lord to give you special grace. We have another call. Hello? Hello, Mother. How are you? Fine. Where are you from? I'm from Warwick, Rhode Island. And what can I do for you? Okay. Um, I have two small children, Mother, a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. And my concern has, since my first child, has always been Halloween. Um, my question is, if you were in my position with two small children, would you even recognize Halloween at all? What I would do, they can't, they, they see it everywhere. They, they go into stores and they see pumpkins and they see faces. And, and I, I, I drove somewhere this afternoon and everywhere I went were imitation ghosts in the yard. Why do why you want to imitate a ghost? Are you trying to scare the kids or what? See, that, that, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. What I would do is, is to explain to them the virtues of the saints and, and explain to them that on this night we repair to the Lord God for all the people who don't like him. Make it very simple. Very simple. But we don't need to follow the customs of the world. We need to tell our children that there are many things that happen on this night that are not nice and offend God. So we're going to have a spiritual party. We're going to pray. <coughs> we're going to have cake and ice cream for Jesus. We're going we're gonna to decide how we're going to be holy. Change it. <coughs> Change it around. The church in the old days used to take a pagan feast and make it into a holy feast. You make a holy feast. Don't succumb to the world. And now, you know, even today, children go out and they start baking candy and sometimes they get razor blades. It's a horrible night all the way around. We have another call. Hello? Hi, my name is Kathy. Hi. I'm calling from Illinois. Okay. I have a question about Halloween. Yeah. Um, you said that Halloween is uh, a feast uh, of Satan. Mm hmm And why do some Catholic churches, the schools, have um, haunted houses and they have the kids come to school in, in the costumes and they have parties and things like that? I don't know. I, I, that's a mystery to me. I, I, I wish I could explain it, and I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening to me say, oh, Mother Angelica, old fuddy-duddy. Uh, 
But you see, Halloween isn't what it used to be. It isn't. And, and you don't have to be very bright to know that. And I, if I was a principal of a school, I would think of a party, but for a different reason. I'd change it. I, I, I just, uh, you know, in my day, they weren't these satanic groups. But you see little kids everywhere with satanic groups. And there are a lot of people thinking of other things to do. Do you have a question? I have a question. Go ahead. Why can't we change, instead of the children dressing up, as witches and devils, have them dress as saints Very and good. change it to celebrating all different saints. You know, a lot of places do that. In fact, uh, I know a couple who get their kids and they, all the kids dress up as little saints and they have All Saints Night. That's the vigil before All Saints Day. So you can change it around. You don't have to have these hideous looking ugly faces. And it, it's, somebody has a question. Oh. Dressing the little children as little saints, we have that in our parish. Wonderful. You see? The There's a parish now that has Halloween, and the kids come as little saints. Now, I think that's turning something around, you see? And, and you can still have a party, but you've spiritualized it. And the same with Christmas. You, know, you have to <laughs> We're celebrating the birthday of Jesus, and you hardly see a picture of him anymore. Oh, we have another call. Hello? Hi. Um, I'm from Summit, and at our parish, um, on Saturday night, on Halloween night, we, we are celebrating um, an All Saints Day party instead of going trick-or-treating. Wonderful. And, um, and, on, and on that Sunday morning, we're going to be um, dressed in our... Um, Saint costumes that we dressed in on on um, the All Saints Day party. What what saint are you going to be? I'm going to be Saint Julia. Saint who? Julia. Pretty good. And um and and my brother's going to be Saint Saint John Rosco, and my other brother's going to be um, Saint Michael the Archangel, and my sister. That's wonderful. Why did you choose? Why did you choose these saints? Um, because we read about them. That's wonderful. <laughs> how, how old are you, sweetheart? I'm eight. You're eight. Isn't that great. <laughs> that's wonderful. I think that, that's that's you ought to give your mom and dad a big hug for me. Will you do that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> You know what amazes me in the last uh, two, three months? We've had a fantastic young, young, young audience. And uh, I want to tell all your children out there listening, just stay close to Jesus. Don't let anything or anybody dissuade you from being close to Jesus, from being the beautiful girl, the beautiful teenager, the beautiful uh, young adult, the beautiful adults, the beautiful married person, the beautiful elderly person that God wants you to be. Don't succumb to the spirit of the world. It not only gets you nowhere, but it, it, it dries up the beauty of your soul. And God made you beautiful. We have another call. Hello? Hi. Hi. Hello? <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Elyria, Ohio, Mother. Uh huh. I really enjoy your program. And, Thank you. And I'm so thankful to God that you're on. Um, I wanted to ask you again um, about, you know, the how they take, took the kneelers out of the, some of the yeah. churches. And, you know, ever since you've been talking about this, Mother, um, it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, during the consecration, I did get down on my knees, and I was the only person without the kneelers that was on their knees. Right. Um, and my husband's been asking me some things about, you know, this. And he wanted to know, is it anywhere in the Bible, you know, that during the consecration we should kneel? 
And the Lord God says in his scriptures, and that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every knee shall bend. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. How much more shall they bend when he, the Lord God, humiliates himself, comes in a, a white piece of host of bread and becomes your food. I don't know what the agenda is to all this foolishness that's going on. Take out the Blessed Sacrament, they take out the statues, they take out processions, they take out the pews, they take, you gotta have a gymnasium or a, a, a room in the round where everybody's gawking at each other, you know, like that. <laughs> With some kind of tree in the middle or something. See, it's almost, it's almost a cult, it's not a church. And I, I would succumb, sorry about that, Nobody can prevent you from kneeling or should even try. All this resurrected people business is a bunch of garbage. Yeah, we're resurrected people, but I have to be also a repentant people. And I must never for a moment lose sight of the awesome majesty of God and the sacrifice of the mass. It is not a feast with dancing women running around with these, shim these what do you call these, crazy looking gowns on, and, and altar girls running around with little things they're doing. And, you know, this is, this is a sacrifice, this is Calvary. This is, this is not a game. I think Our Lady stood. I don't think she thought it was a feast. It was a sacrifice. We can't, we can't put that aside because somebody else has lost their faith or somebody is bending the knee to the idol of feminism. You kneel. If you're the only one in a church, you will be kneeling with a legion of angels. As the priest said, this is by body. Remember, pray before you vote. Vote in the name of God. Pray that our country will once again be a nation under God. Take your feast days, make them Catholic, make them Christian. Be brave. Speak out for Jesus. Tell the world how wonderful he is. Visit him in the Blessed Sacrament. By your example will all men know. Words don't mean much anymore, but your example speaks a thousand words. So, I love you. But God loves you a lot. So don't forget that, huh? And all you six, seven, eight-year-olds, you hang in there. You give all these adults the example of how to be a Christian. And then they'll understand that God speaks to children and a little child shall lead them. Bye now.
to order this episode of Mother Angelica Live Classics from the EWTN Religious Catalog web store, log on to EWTNRC.com 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316. Live Truth, Live Catholic with Trusted Series features and specials from EWTN Home Video. The EWTN home video highlight for November is the transgender movement, what Catholics need to know. This powerful five-part mini-series reveals the hidden cultural forces behind the gender-affirming campaign presently sweeping the nation. Host Mary Hassan chronicles the issues now confronting the family and how the church can respond. Gender ideology affects all of us. As it permeates our culture and social institutions, it's sowing confusion, changing our language and our laws, and affecting our work and relationships. In every diocese and parish, there are Catholic families whose lives have been turned upside down by transgender ideology. Watch free anytime at EWTN.com forward slash on demand or to purchase the DVD, log on to our web store, EWTNRC.com or call 1-800-854-6316. Our next act is reminding us that we're not getting any younger. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got an appointment with Dr. Ray Garindi. Appreciate it. You could have used a few more superlatives. Guy came into my office, had a carrot in one ear, and he had a banana in the other. He said, Doc, what's wrong with me? I said, oh, it's simple. You're just not eating right. Don't you get it? Did you guys get it? Somebody explain that to her. Dr. Ray Garendi, amateur comedian, professional psychologist living right with dr ray on the global catholic network ewtn enroll in ewtn sacred scripture study session every weekday at 11 30 a.m eastern join leading scripture scholars as they deliver daily insights into the gospels monday Classes begin with Father Francis Martin's deep insights on the Gospel of Mark. Tuesday, Dr. Edward Shree invites us to better understand the Blessed Mother's role by knowing Mary through the Bible. On Wednesday, Dr. Tim Gray answers students' questions on the unique perspective offered by the Gospel of John. Thursday, Dr. Francis Hogan delivers a concise overview of our Lord's ministry through Matthew's testimony to Jesus. Friday, Join Dr. Timothy O'Donnell and witness the humble life of our Savior through the eyes of Luke, meek scribe of Christ. All this during our sacred scripture study session, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on EWTN. EWTN Radio, spreading the truth of the gospel to big cities and small towns like yours through network affiliates like 1140 AM, Holy Family Radio, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thanks for sharing in the mission of EWTN Radio. Take your faith one step beyond and enter Father Spitzer's universe at the intersection of faith and reason. It's a journey into infinite truth. Father Spitzer's universe. Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the EWTN. Now you can get EWTN radio at home, in the car, or anywhere on the go with Sirius XM. Sirius XM brings you EWTN's great programming all day, every day. To subscribe and learn more, just go to SiriusXM.com slash offers slash EWTN and start listening today. The eternal word wherever you go on Sirius.